From Television City in Hollywood, it's the Tim Conway Comedy Hour. Since the time we began, every show that we plan is designed so we can come back to you. It's a kick all the way when you write just to say we've been fun and we may come back to you. We don't know where you are if you're watching our show in your home or a bar. Star Edie Gourmet. Our special guest star, Steve Allen. Much. Thank you very much. Uh, we're reuniting Steve and Edie again together this evening. <laughs> Did you ever think you'd see me here again? Uh, uh, shut up. I'll handle this, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Allen was the one, as you all know, that uh, read my biography, which we passed out earlier here in the audience, who discovered me in Cleveland, Ohio, and brought me out to this promised land over... Do you realize how long that's been? About 10 years. About 10 years ago. And brought me here to this very city, put me on an ABC show for three weeks, then canceled this show and sent me back to Cleveland. Right? That's right. And then brought me back out here again. And now this. I ask you. But I, I, I in, in all seriousness, out of heck with it. Listen. <laughs> you got your I think that's you know I mean? seriousness. Yes. And of course, Edie Gorm will be on the show tonight, too. <laughs> and a couple of lovely numbers, aren't you? Yes. Oh, yes. I'm singing some terrific songs, and I'm in a marvelous sketch. And I think altogether it's going to be a very fair show. No, it's not fair. It's not a fair show. This is a big one. It's not even a biggie. It's a huge one. Believe me. I can feel it. It's going to the top. What do you think? I, I feel it way down deep inside. I do, too. You know, I'm, you can feel it. You can. Oh, yeah. I'm beginning to feel it myself. <laughs> What? <laughs> We're all going to regroup and be back in a minute. Come on, guys, let's talk this over. All right. It's the Tim Conway Comedy Hour. Tonight also featuring Bellin and Somerville, Art Matano, McLean Stevenson, the Jimmy Joyce Singers, and the Tom Hansen Dancers. They say the average moviegoer is between the age of 18 and 25, but what do they know? <laughs> In any event, here are Tim Conway and his old soldiers to botch up these st st statistics. I almost botched up this introduction. Come on, boys. Come on right in and start. Use the buddy system. Whoa! You boys. Down in front. Shark in here. Right here. Cliff! Cliff! Yeah. We're going to have fun. We're going to be fun. Come on, Come on, It's a train, duck. duck. That's the projector. Oh. There's a movie up here. Oh, it's my X-rays. Big screen X-rays. There's the picture. Oh, but they're very good, aren't they? That's not the picture. She's a good actress. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Over here. There's a my more. seat's on an angle. How are you? Get up. Uh. Oh, 
You're not in your seat. Oh, well, that seat's for Jeffrey. <laughs> Jeffrey's dead. Wasn't that a shame? It was a good seat. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you all right? Uh, you okay? Uh, you okay? Uh, you okay? Uh, you okay? Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm hungry! Mm. Hungry, hungry, hungry. Right, boys. Here you go. Oh, oh, yeah. Here's some popcorn. Prunes! No prunes tonight. Oh! Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, water and zucchini. Yeah, here you go. Some popcorn. I want Prune. some mush and some juicy beads for Jeffrey. Jeffrey's dead. Oh, that's a shame. You better get him some chicken soup. <laughs> there you go. You want some popcorn? Ah, uh, I want a jawbreaker. Huh? Uh, jawbreaker! You don't have any teeth! Huh? No teeth! Huh? No teeth! Huh? Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah. Ah. 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 Holy cow, louder, louder! Oh, focus it! Focus, a little focus! Why the scream? Why the scream? Whoa, what an extra of x rays on that woman! Whoa! Into soon. Svelle Brinka. That's Jeffrey! <laughs> Jeffrey's dead. What a way to go! There's another movie on over there. No, no, no. no. I want this one. What's showing over there? Ah, uh, sex begins at 80 and senile woman. Hurry up! Come on, guys. I got everybody. Hold on. Hold it. Here we go. Uh, guys, come on back. The show started again. <laughs> Stop your foot upon the ground. Stick your right hand in the air. Gentlemen, kiss your lady fair. Lift your partner in the air. If she's too heavy, then pull her hair. <laughs> and if he pull your hair too tight, just give his hand a grateful bite. <laughs> now swing your partner round and round to make some kind of a rotten sound. <laughs> Out and out of man in, kick your partner in the shin. Then promenade left just like a dummy, punch your partner in his tummy. Push to the earth, girls to the south, then come back and smack him in the mouth. Alaman left and squeeze his nose, stomp real hard right on his toes. 
curtsy once and twirl about, and then you knock his choppers out. Lead him on the merry chase, step right on his stupid face. Kick him low, kick him high, poke him again, high, high, high. Everybody straight, nobody's quiet. Now we have real good riot. This kind of stuff is really tops and dirty thing. Let's call the cops. You all know what the policeman does, let's really hear it for the fudge. Pack up the beer, just pack the rod, jam everybody with a can of rod. Get them to the hose, got to the key, don't you let them pass with me. What are you looking at, stupid jerk? Why in the head don't you get to work? I grab your hat and I throw it down, cause you're a stupid looking clown. Everybody here, better get here, or stick my finger in your ear. Can't stand this corn on the cop, gonna find me another job. Yes! Hi, we're the famous team of Steve and Edie. <laughs> You're much taller in person. <laughs> anyway, be that as it may, and I don't think it was, here are Tim and the guys with another almost classic World War II briefing room sketch. This better be good, fellas. You're much taller in person. I'm not in person. <laughs> from there to there. You dumb cough, I put you over there, that's all. <laughs> now, what do you want? My Peter, look and see. <laughs> Holy smoke and see. <laughs> Boy, those guys are everywhere. Well, look. Well, if that don't work, you gonna give up? Huh, Smiley? <laughs> Give up in military hiding school. You know why? You put your left foot out, shake it all about. That's what I call hiding the crow. <laughs> now, if they surround you like that, here's what you do. You take yourself and you get under a pillow. Like that. That's where you hide yourself. Now, they never find you under a pillow. What the heck's wrong with you, anyway? <laughs> You're under the pillow like that. You don't ever see a tank looking for a guy under a pillow, do you? <laughs> Maybe a guy on a horse. You never with a tank. So you hide under the pillow. <laughs> Somebody's leaking our plans out. <laughs> Holy smoke. Well. Huh. Okay, I'll tell you what, I wasn't gonna. What have you been eating? <laughs> I wasn't gonna reveal this, but there's one place you can hide that they never find you. You know what that is? In your pocket. You take yourself and you put yourself in your pocket. Then you hide in your pants. <laughs> Who the 
heck's ever gonna find you in your pants? <laughs> and you'll be safe, and you won't have... What the <laughs> Just yanks in my pants. <laughs> okay, so the plans are leaking out somewhere. But I'll tell you one thing. If you really want to hide, there's only one place. I wasn't going to reveal this, but in military hiding school, we learned this. The best place to hide yourself at any time is in a sandwich. <laughs> you can put yourself in a sandwich, they never find you. Wait a minute, this is peanut butter. Who's got a better sandwich? What do you got? <laughs> you got the jiggles of what you got. Brown Spaga. <laughs> Where'd you go to school? Brown Spaga. What do you got? I got bologna. What do you Cream got? cheese. Huh? Cream cheese. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what do you got, dummy? Cream <laughs> cheese. I know what you got. <laughs> Never worst. Yeah. <laughs> Well, what do you got? I am knockwurst. Yeah? Let's yeah. see the knockwurst. Give me that knockwurst sandwich. You'll never find you in a knockwurst. Can't give it up. You can give it up. I tried you the peanut butter. Give me that knockwurst. <laughs> I don't give want to that. give it to you. Give me that sandwich. I trade you. Give me that. <clears throat> now, I'll show you something. You put yourself in a knockwurst sandwich, man. Then never. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Now. All right, everybody back. Ah, don't don't get him move. Don't, nobody move. <laughs> Give me that knock worse. <laughs> How do you like that? We lost the war, now I gotta eat in the cafeteria. <laughs> uh, now here's Tom Hansen dances. And guess what? Tom put on his dancing shoes, so it's Tom Hansen and the Tom Hansen dances. It's better be good. I mean it. <laughs>
Is there a uh, doctor in the house? I guess not. Well, it's all right, because there are three of them on stage. <laughs> I'm afraid it's hopeless. We've done all we can for this patient. Yeah, you're right, Doctor. Between the three of us, we can't seem to find the correct operative solution. That's right, gentlemen. <laughs> well, I've called in Dr. Jonathan Howard. He's a specialist in these cases. I'm sure he can help us. <laughs> Trust I'm in time, doctors. I've had a previous case that required my attention. I understand you've tried arresting the pulmonary cardiac transverse valve. Is that correct? Yes, doctor. Have you tried the Balford method? The what? The Balford method. Yes, we tried that. <laughs> That's why he's so sick. And has not had a Balford. This... You've tried the Balford method yes. and you've had no success? None whatsoever, doctor. What's this man's pulse? Oh, 35 and growing weak. Great Scott. Doctors, I know exactly what to do. If you don't mind, would you please leave the room? Mm -hmm. I must get to work very fast. Excuse me. Thank you. Be right outside if you need us. Start hard, brave fellow. Five hippo lips and two mosquito knees. <laughs> He's expensive, isn't he? <laughs> We'll be right back with Steve Allen and Edie Gourmet right after this word from you know who about you know what. <laughs> Stay tuned for the second portion of the Tim Conway Comedy Hour with Tim's guests, Steve Allen and Edie Gourmet. I've never been so 
shot before I headed blindly for the door detective until I saw the rehearsal of this next sketch <laughs> and here's Tim as detective whoopie doo <laughs> <laughs> Do? How's it going? Real good, and to you too, I bet you. Got anything new on the Murdoch case? Any new yeah. leads? Yeah, I got a couple of notes here. You got a minute? Shoot. All right. Well, uh, first of all, we know that the Murdoch the Good Diamond was stolen from the Barwood Museum on June the 7th, about 1.35 a.m., moments after the guard, Max Westerfeld, broke for coffee. Well, at first we suspected that Linda and Lloyd Robin took a diamond on the way to the sanitarium, but they had an airtight alibi being with the noted playboy, Arthur Dundee. And the problem is that Dundee was once accused of trying to extort money from Edie Fleming and her spinster sister while they were on a San Rafael cruise during the Mon and the Soon. <laughs> reports that the Murdoch Diamond was a hand carried by Rocco, who was to make a deal with the half-starved Cheyenne Indian on the August like on their tent. On August the 12th, the Dundee met with the head of the Dragon Society at the same time in Africa. Dr. Benjamin Tott was holding a Jocko as a hostage only yards away from an angry volcano. But he escaped and underwent plastic surgery to pose as a local police commissioner. That's what threw us off. Now, did this mean that Dr. Von Roost was involved? Uh, Laverne? Not at this yeah, point. This who was the only man who uh, could I got myself this? into one here with Whoopi Doo. A man who <laughs> uses his fist and guns instead of his charm when that all fails. Rabbi Weiss. <laughs> Meanwhile, the lab boys went over to the Briarwood Museum and came up with a different name. They ran the dart gun and threw ballistics and found a negative. Now, you're probably asking yourself, what about Devalicia, the Indian girl, who led the dual life? She found herself she found herself entangled in the romantic affair with the corrupt jockey. Now Dundee found out, and so did the Dragon Society, and it looked like curtains for a while. But on the Labor Day vacation, the blue sky, who incidentally was also an Indian, no, gave her permission to drill for oil on his property. Well, did this broke the case of wide open. <laughs> but on that Labor Day, they gave permission to join that. And he said to him, Ralph, he said, look, why don't you join the Boer movement for spite? Well, the investigation was closed. But only for an hour. A new lead turned up on the diamond, and when Frank and the Russian agent were on the Frank was aware that the agent's identity was neither that nor this. And so, to our surprise, who did he think it was? The half-starved Cheyenne Indian, who seems to be just a dupe. And the Dragon Society knew it. Now, there were two possible things that we could do. Either take a helicopter, <laughs> or buy a submarine now. Now, where was Dundee? Where was Evelicia? Where was Benjamin Tott? Well, 
Who knew that Lola was in a religious cult? <laughs> this is real important to hear, Chief. <laughs> On October 12th, Malaysia, who seemed to be the... Three weeks later. <laughs> they on the way at the Dragon Society with the parents of the arts and crafts and the struck dirt. And the incredible thing was that no one knew where Cookie Walsh was. But somehow, the pieces just don't fit. <laughs> Probably no more dedicated people than a team of mountain climbers. They'll climb anything. <laughs> Come those mountain climbers again. Yeah, here they come. How many in your party, sir? Wait a minute, I hear an echo. What? How many in your party, sir? Uh, three. Three? Yeah. Come this way. Right. Come on, boys. Let's go. I don't give up now. No. We're almost there. Just hang on. Yeah. And remember, what? Don't look down. I, I, uh. I don't think I can go on. Yeah, sure, you can make it. No, we'll ah. never make it. You know why? Why? There's too much wax on this floor. <laughs> Mark, keep coming. Okay. It's, I'll right. right through this tunnel. Hey, I'll grab the table leg. Hey. What? Good news. What? I can see the table from here. Good. Oh, it's the wrong oh. table. It's the other one. Okay. Ah. We'll never make it on this cheap linoleum. Just <laughs> <laughs> raise one foot on the wall, sissy. Put the other on the hot stove. Okay. I didn't want to do this. Oh. You okay? I'm freezing. My fingers are numb. But don't worry. When we get to the table, I'll stick your hand in the mashed potatoes. <laughs> Too far to climb. I smell trouble. And the trouble you smell is the red cabbage. <laughs> I can't hold on. My fingers are slipping. Hold on! I'll tell you what. What? If you're tired, we'll camp here for the night. We can't do that, you idiot. Our dinner reservations are for 8.30. <laughs> it's too late. I'm falling. Oh. Say goodbye to the roast beef. <laughs> Wait! Oh. 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 Well, he's well out of it. Yeah. Come on. Will you make it? Oh, no. What's wrong? I'm going snow blind. Pull yourself together, you idiot. That's the tablecloth. <laughs> Thanks, I needed that. Give me the courage to go on. With the sketch or with the climb? <laughs> That's what I meant when I said he was well out of it. <laughs> you have no courage. You're getting too old and too smart. Come on. You need some help? I can make it. I'm almost to the table. Yeah. Can you see? Can you see the menus yet? Yeah. Boy, the prices are atrocious. Oh. They're also upside down. Things <laughs> happen. Pull us up. I can't. Look out and landslide. You know, we've been getting a lot of complaints. Yeah. Maybe this restaurant's too hard to climb. I think so. Hello, we're Bellin and Somerville. This is Bruce Bellin, and I'm David Somerville. Some of you may remember us because we sang a song a few minutes ago. And we're going to sing another one right now with the help of an old friend, Pop Conway. Good morning. My tears are warm, the night is cold Because my arms no longer hold The girl I built my future life upon She gone 
My heart was all she took away The dreams we shared are here to stay They haunt me till it's time to face the dawn She's gone <laughs> I'm lonely, lonely, lonely as can be If only, only someone cared for me so I pray the skies above to let me find a brand new love. The old one's not around to carry on. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone. Well, that just about puts the old cap on the show for this evening. Uh, next week, my guests will be Mickey Rooney and Dorothy L'Amour, and the following week will be Connie Stevens and Walter Brennan. However, this is our last show that we'll be taping here live and in person, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, this show has been canceled, and I know why, because a guy came down and said, don't do that anymore. <laughs> but we were close, we missed by that much. Uh, however, I have met a lot of friends along the way, seriously, and I would like to acknowledge them tonight. And also, uh, when it comes to having your own show, I guess really few are chosen, and I would like to thank CBS for allowing me to kind of mess around here for 13 weeks, and most of all, for allowing myself to come into your home and to meet a few of you people. And since I read all the mail that comes in personally, and there were three letters. I want to thank you folks at home, really, for writing in, seriously. And I'd like to thank now some special friends who are with me most of the year, Jimmy Joyce Singers. <laughs> the sensational Tom Hansen dancers and Tom himself. other young gentlemen that you're going to be seeing a lot of because they were sensational on this show and they're, they've only just begun, really. The third bananas. <laughs> and two gentlemen who will be with wherever I go. Art Madrano and McLean Stevenson. Gosh, you big lugs, you... Thank you so much. We're gonna miss you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John Amos. Hey, 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 And I'm, I'm very happy to be with these two people tonight because I consider them very close friends. And as I say, I started with Steve, and now, Steve, look what you've done. <gasps> Jim, mm. just want to say, I'll get you for this. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, dear. Bye. Thank you very much. That's not fair. Gosh, <laughs> thank you. I would like you also to 
pay special attention to the credits as they roll by tonight because these are the people who really put this whole thing together. And also, you must blame somebody in a situation when it goes off like this, so I'd like to blame my announcer. <laughs> <laughs> Ernie Anderson has been with me ever since I was in Cleveland 10 years ago, and I feel it's his fault. What the hell? <laughs> got glimpse of. So until we meet again, it's like I always say. <laughs> I'd like to blame two people. <laughs> Gee, it's all fine and dandy. Sugar candy when I'm with you. Good night, everybody, and thank you. Announcer speaking. And I'm sorry. <laughs>